Are you on Windows 7? In this episode, we're going to be talking about end of life and what you can do about it. Don't go anywhere. Hello to you and welcome to The Hive, the home of business technology, news, tips, interviews and more. Now, if you haven't been here before, my name is Ryan and if you want to keep up to date with all things tech, all you need to do is make sure that you hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. So today in The Hive, we are joined by a special guest and we are giving a warm welcome back to Paul Gibbons from Chess, who is a cloud service specialist. Uh, Paul, welcome back to you. As we know, Windows 7 is coming to its end of life, uh, January 2020. Um, what does that mean, though, in terms of the guys out there, like end of life? What's that? So Microsoft, uh, obviously, with Windows 7 in particular, it's 10 years old. So they are retiring the product in its entirety. So that actually means that there'll be no longer any updates whatsoever. None at all? None at all. So it's literally, from a, a business perspective, they, a business needs to consider what they're going to do to move off it because mm. staying off it is, is beyond a reasonable doubt that it's going to be a, a, a threat to how their business operates. Right. So when you, when you say th threat, in what sense? So with, when you don't get any updates, so that includes any security patching or any firmware updates, so then what you, you, you're basically doing is opening up um, attacks from cyber criminals. Yeah. So it's, it's probably, if, you, if you're fishing, it's like fishing with dynamite. It makes it very, very easy for them to, to actually get into where they need to get into. Then you've got your other concerns around not just what that means from a, a business and a productivity point of view, but then you've got implications around if there's any any compliance that they need to be governed by, right. and equally GDPR. So well, especially we, especially GDPR, that's a massive. Yeah, I mean thing, we, we, we saw BA a couple of days ago with their results from from what happened with them. Um, you're not talking small fees. No. So even you know whether you're a big Goliath or whether you're a, a small business, any fine at all straight off your bottom line you can't do it. So this is the time to say, right, okay, line in the sand, we need to get off it, what we need to do. So speaking about getting off it then, so say if I'm a business uh, and, I, and I've got Windows 7, uh, what can I do, you know, what, what are the best things to do to move forward and kind of then keeping their business safe with the tools that they're using? Yeah, so a, a, a huge consideration when migrating off any, any platform that you've had for a long time is, can the apps that you use, the line of business apps, can they still operate with using Windows 10? Mm -hmm. um, chances are you have to do something maybe cute, but yes, you can. Right, okay. And the other thing is, it's there's a huge, huge difference between what is Windows 10 and what is Windows 7. So from any business, large or small, there's huge value for actually moving to the latest and greatest. Yeah. I mean, Windows 10 in, in the, the, the Microsoft world, it's one of their biggest releases. And it's also one of the most secure releases because Microsoft have never been famous for security. They owned up themselves that they were mm. never good for security. However, over the last three years, they've spent about $3 billion on building a security practice. Um, there's a, around about 3,500 specialists that sit in Microsoft. So that is bigger than most governments have as, as a security practice. So it's, it's, to me, it's a given that large or small businesses should be now starting to move into those realms. It's good that you say about the security side of it because now we, we've seen in uh, press clips online and everything else that kind of cybercrime is the biggest side of it now. Yeah, People don't have to break into buildings mm -hmm. and go, they can literally now be sat in a car, car park at home and they can, infiltrate structures and data just by being on and not being as and not being as savvy as do you know what making a yep. simple jump from a, what was an old program to something that's still kind of relatively new uh, but that's a lot safer yep um so if you were to say some recommendations then what would be like f for you saying to people come off that you know come off windows 7 and move to windows 10 what what would be like the pluses what are the big things that really really stand out yeah it's a good question so the if you look at just just the Windows aspect, so the, the operating system, the operating system has got hardened security now built into it. You've got all types of, of different complementary things that really secure a user. Because at the end of the day, a user, what is a user now? And where is a user? Mm. Actually, a user is, is 
an individual or persona that could be on multiple devices at, at different times. Yeah. Or sometimes at the same time. My watch is synced to my phone, my phone is, is synced to my laptop, my laptop is synced to my home device. And actually how I access my information, it's across all the devices. But I know all the devices are secure, mm -hmm. all the devices have got a, 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 a demarcation between what is my personal data and what is my business data. Yeah. And that is, is not just because, yes, we know how to do that, but actually it's it's available to any business, including your small businesses, yeah. because it's Microsoft technology that does it. And especially loads of money thrown into the back end of it to keep pushing it, to keep really driving it forward, to make it kind of what it really, really is. Absolutely. I couldn't imagine a business nowadays uh, being, being really honest, still operating on Windows 7. The time that we're in and the, how quickly we move forward, and even the idea of what you just said then, that you can use it up for up to five devices, and industries that we're all in, I do like the theory of going, do you know what, actually, I'm gonna use my tablet, put that down, oh, actually, I can still carry that on on my phone, and I don't understand why people still would stay on Windows 7 when they, can, they can't even do that. On, oh, I mean, correct me it's, if I'm wrong, they can't do that on Windows 7, can they? No, I mean, it was it was a very, very good operating system. The same as, as your old office suites. They were, they were very, very good at the time, mm. but we've evolved significantly from where we were 10 years ago, everything has. So if you actually look at your, the, the way that, that people do stuff now, it's yeah. completely different to, to how we were doing it just 10 years ago. And how we'll be doing stuff in two years' time, again, is, is going to be significantly different to how we do it today, because collaboration is huge. Yeah, massive. But, you know, everybody should be embracing collaboration, but then you've got to consider that that causes then a threat mm -hmm. to your intellectual property that you have in the business, to, to your secure files. You know, how do you, how do you se separate or segregate between what you want people to be able to see and what you don't want people to see? And that's the, the, the world that we live in today. But again, Microsoft has spent a lot of, of time, effort, and money investment mm -hmm. with some of the, the, the biggest, what I could call propeller heads in the business, right. that are actually creating this environment for people to just consume. And that's the big one is consumption. Yep. You know, don't look at the complexity of how I set it up. We can help as a business with that using Microsoft tools to, to help businesses. Now, speaking about tools, actually, so say if I'm a business on Windows 7 and then after this kind of chat today, I've gone, do you know what, actually, we need to really make that jump to Windows 10. Uh, as a business, what options are there? What can I do then to migrate over to Windows 10? Well, what kind of things would you recommend that are out there? So I think something that needs looking at is traditionally when somebody's bought the, the or taken Windows 7, the device is also of the same age. Right. More often than not. So there's a consideration around actually I should be looking at the, the devices that I'm using as well as the operating system. Also now is a really good time to look at all the other things that have been bought to, to secure. So your antivirus, yep. if you're using something that, that's to protect against malware, you've got your firewalls to consider. So all of a sudden this is a really good opportunity to look at tech refresh across the board. Yep. And then move to what I class as a modern workplace and what Microsoft regard as a modern workplace, which is agile, any device, any time, any place. Yeah. So now's a really good time to do that. You're future-proofing yourself and you're also making sure that you, you are agile enough for whatever you're facing going forward. Because we know that the, the, this country is going to change, especially with Brexit. So well, now's yeah. now's <laughs> we, we really, don't know, do we? We don't know. <laughs> so, so with that, this is a good time because you've got to do something. So rather than do something halfway or, or maybe put a sticking plaster over the wound, you say, right, okay, we, we should be doing this and let's let's just do it right. Just do it, do the jump and it's almost make that, it's not, I wouldn't even say it's a big jump, but just make that jump over to, if anything, you're just helping yourself to succeed yes. in, in whatever business that you're in. Yeah. Because I know some of the packages that they offer as well are, are relatively cheap. They are, absolutely. For what, for what you get. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other thing as well is, 
you don't have to burn money off your bottom line. You can actually do this more as a subscription now. We're one of the, 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 the last countries mm. to really get on board with this. But residual leasing, mm -hmm. you know, we've been, been doing it for, with cars for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. This is the time now to consider that because then you'll never get caught by this again. You'll never be sweating an asset that's beyond its capability because every every two to three years yeah. you naturally refresh so when you say naturally refresh will they, will they get um, like a, a new device which absolutely is you, you, you just you never own it you just give it back so you, you use it you, you sweat it for as long as it should be sweated yeah and then you give it back and then you go back down the cycle again and that's better for a business anyway 100 percent, because it, it, it there's no there's no value in owning this stuff anymore it's a bit like a car you know for what it's going to lose its value yeah technology moves on fast i mean apple bring out a new device every six months yeah you know and and you, you say right okay i'm not i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it but you you do because you, you just do because <laughs> you want the latest yeah and greatest and, and then all of a sudden this one starts slowing down anyway because that's what happens so it's this this stops that cycle from happening again and keeps it especially in the age and era that we're in where businesses are going so fast and i suppose it helps it helps you to keep up with it it does you know, it, it, it helps you to keep that competitive edge it also makes you quite attractive to to when you're employing especially when you're looking at the xys or the millennials yeah because they absolutely are looking for somebody that's using latest and greatest technology and the behavior that they expect because mm. they're online all the time now so yeah. if, if you want to attract those you have to have the right platform and the, and the right environment for them to come into. Well, I know that that's really true actually, because that, uh, we know in terms of our teams here at The Hive that we've had people and colleagues that have worked in similar businesses where they've been on things like Windows 7 and they're quite younger than us and they've sat down and gone, what's this? Absolutely. And, and, and it's hit them where they don't really know exactly what they're doing. So, um, so in keeping things up pace and up tempo, is probably and keeping modern with stuff is is the best way forward. Yeah. Uh, but to kind of summarise, what would be if you was to say a big message to get people from Windows Seven to Windows Ten, what would your big message be? So don't don't hold back. Yes, it's going to have its challenges. Yes, you need advice. So make sure you're getting the advice from the people that do this yep. and the people that have, have the ability to help with the adoption as well. That's a huge one. Don't just take this stuff and then not use it to its full capability. Protect that investment by opening up everything that's available because you'd be surprised how many people don't know that there's stuff in the, the suite mm. that makes a difference to the business. Brilliant. So we're going to put links to everything that we've discussed today down in the description box below. So go and have a look. But Paul, I want to say a massive thank you. Thank you so much oh, for coming you. in. Thanks Pleasure. a lot. Uh, but of course, if you want to see any more from The Hive, all you need to do is make sure you simply head over to chessict.co.uk forward slash The Hive. But from me, thank you very much. Take care and we'll see you next time on The Hive. Bye bye for now. Paul Gibbons, Chess Cloud Service Specialist. I might even say it like that. So, uh, no. So today in the Hive, we are being joined once again by a special... No, that doesn't make fucking sense what I'm saying. <laughs>